With Luminar Neo's latest update 1.4.0, I'm going to show you how to use the clone tool to fix this image into this. Now I really like this image, but it's a bit too tight on the right. So what I want to do is clone some of this area here into here. The problem is with Neo, there's no way to expand your canvas. So I first thought, why not bring in a white canvas and bring in the image as a layer? Unfortunately, because we can't merge the layers, when I go to clone the image here, it doesn't see the bottom layer. See, so I'm trying to clone, but nothing's happening. We'll have to export this. So let's go into share folder, name it accordingly. I would export it either as a PNG or a TIFF file. Go ahead and click export. And then we can bring in the file once again and finally get to work on it. So now that I have my canvas, we're just going to go into the clone tool. As I mentioned before, we want to clone this area into the white area here. All we want to do is create a bit more headspace on the right here. So as you see on the screen, it says click to set the source. So what we're going to do is click Alt and then click the left mouse button. Now you'll see another cursor here. And this cursor means you're going to start sampling from this area. So first I'm going to roughly line up the cursors, click my mouse and bring it all the way down. And yes, it's okay for your strength and softness to be at 100% because we're doing this part just to fill in the area and then we'll do some cleanup. And then we want to continue doing the same thing across until we get to about this point. We don't want to go too far. And also, we don't need too much space, right? So we just want to do some of it. We could probably do a little bit more on the top and bottom. So now I'm just going to hold my mouse and swipe to the right so that we get just a bit more detail here. And then we're going to do the same to the bottom. And you're going to see those lines. Don't worry, we're going to fix that. That should be good. And word of caution, if you make a mistake, you can clone over the mistake, but you can't undo. That's one of the big downsides of Neo right now. In general, there's no undo. So you would have to reset the clone and start all over. So it could be a pain if you're doing a job like this. So now that we've filled some of the area, I think that's enough headroom. We could go further out, but we're going to end up cropping this side a little bit more. So we have some headroom looking the other way. So it looks a lot more better. What I'm going to do is sample here again. It doesn't have to be exact. And then we're just going to softly bring this down. Just get rid of that line there. Okay. Another thing you have to be careful about is repetition in the patterns that you're cloning. So what I could do now here is pick a different source and we're going to go a bit closer to the edge here. Click Alt and set the source. Mouse click there. And then I'm just going to replicate a little bit of that area there, bring it down. There we go. So that the repetition's not there anymore. Let's even out this area here. So I'm going to select my source here and just brush it gently here. At this point, you could probably bring the strength down to about 50 or so, even lower. It really depends on what you're doing. You could gently go and correct this here. So now, because it's blurry in the background, I don't have to worry too much about details. Even here to blend things in, we're going to click this source here. And then we're just going to copy a little bit of it here so that it looks random, right? And then we could probably fix a little bit more here. A couple words of advice when you're doing cloning and stamping, it's always best to take your time. Most of the time you're going to want to lower your strength and play around with the softness. At this point, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. The reflections look pretty accurate. The tone looks a bit dull here, but we can fix that. So the next thing to do is to set up our crop. Now this is a free crop, but for this image, we're going to crop it to about that point crop a little bit from the top, a little from the bottom here. And then we're going to crop in the tad here again to give that illusion of a bit more headspace at the front here. Might want to bring that backside a 
bit more. Quite a big difference from when we started. Now this looks like a better composed image. For final touch-ups, what I'd like to do is increase the exposure a tad here because you see that it's a little bit darker here and then it gets a bit brighter, but then it goes back to dark. So I'm going to go ahead into develop and bring up the exposure maybe to about that point. Then we're going to click on masking, go to brush and paint. And I'm going to increase my brush size here. For the strength, I'm going to bring it down pretty low, about 20. Gently bring in the exposure adjustment so that it blends in a bit there. I know it was a very minor adjustment, but it's the little details that count. Then the second thing I would do to kind of distract people away from it being cloned, and this is totally optional, is go into structure and we're going to do our little fake bouquet trick. Bring the structure down maybe up to about that point. Again, we're going to go into masking and click brush, but this time we're going to erase it. Now I'm going to do it quickly, but again, you should really take your time with this just to get accurate results. And really what we're doing here is we're taking off the structure effect because we only want it in the background. So I would just remove all of the mask here. Now you don't have to be too accurate on the edges, but if you do want to, obviously you would zoom in here and adjust your brush size so that you can mask out these areas. And just like that, we have a well-composed great blue heron, which previously I didn't want to share because if I cropped it any tighter, it looked too tight. But now I have that headspace here and it looks great. Now, obviously the clone tool could be used for many other things. You could use it for retouching blemishes, removing signs or garbage in a scene. But if you want to see more on the clone tool, let me know in the comments below. Obviously there were more things on this update, but I wanted to focus just on the clone tool. I'll put the details on the screen, what else is coming with this update, and also a link in the description below where you can check out for yourself on Skylam's website. In the meantime, if you're wondering how to use Luminar Neo's noiseless AI, make sure to check out this video. But until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.